Hello fellow travelers, I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. I have come to the top of the Atlanta Air Traffic Control Tower in order to understand how this amazingly complex system works. Let's explore air traffic control. If you like travel and aviation, click the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you can be among the first to know when I publish a new video. We're gonna get an overview of the entire system. Then we'll break it into its three primary parts. That's center, tracon, and of course the tower with its incredible views. Be sure to stick around to the end to see that. But first, let's check out Atlanta Center. I am here with Torrance Branch, who is the air traffic manager for the Atlanta Center. If you, if you don't know much about air traffic, that's a big deal. We're with a guy who's in charge of some of the busiest airspace, frankly, on the planet. So thank you so much for spending some time with us. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. I had just flown in from my home airport in Greensboro, North Carolina on Delta Flight 867, an MD-88. So I asked Torrance to use my flight to explain the various roles air traffic control plays. Uh, good morning, Delta 867, 1-4000 across uh, Asia, 1-2000 to 50 with Charlie. Delta 867, land approach, morning, runway 26 right. 26 right, Delta 867. The pilot goes on and he's ready to, to actually taxi. He goes to what they call ground control. That's actually in the tower. Um, the airplane is then instructed to taxi toward the runway. Um, once the airplane gets uh, to the runway, the frequency changes to what we call a local controller in the uh, tower. And uh, the airplane is uh, then, when ready, cleared for takeoff. Once they're cleared, uh, local controller clears them uh, from departure. They go to the Greensboro Tracon, um, which will work the aircraft to about 12,000 feet, and then they'll switch over to what we call lateral center or high altitude airspace. Um, and then that aircraft, depending on what, where they're going, can travel uh, through various sectors throughout the center's airspace. Once they get to uh, to uh, what the, you hear the pilots say, initial descent. Um, that's when the, air, the aircraft is starting this, its descent out of the center's airspace, usually at uh, some point into the uh, pros control's airspace or the TRACON. Um, we'll switch them to them. They'll work the aircraft into a uh, lineup where they're uh, actually vectoring them to the actual airport. Um, once they get within uh, about seven to 10 miles, and uh, that aircraft is switched to the tower, local controller, and uh, clear for uh, landing. And then taxi back to the uh, gate once it's landed. So that's kind of the general, real quick way of kind of explaining what we do. With Torrance's overview in mind, let's take a closer look at each of these segments of the air traffic control system. We'll get started with Atlanta Center. This outline here is our airspace, Atlanta Center. If you notice, there's uh, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, South Virginia, um, are all encompasses inside of our airspace. While you're cruising along enjoying, say, a cup of coffee, air traffic controllers at various centers like this one around the country are on the ground monitoring your flight to ensure your journey at cruising altitude is a safe one. Now, obviously, one of their most important concerns is weather. So the National Weather Service has employees on site to help keep an eye on it. Controllers get a weather briefing um, uh, right at the beginning of their shifts. Getting out into a little bit more of a summertime pattern. Frontal system is going to be moving a little bit closer to our our northern boundary uh, uh, over the next 12 hours or so. Uh, but it will be basically parked over top of our airspace by this time tomorrow. We'll be looking for uh, mostly clear skies on the south side, mostly cloudy skies on the north and northwest side. Each center is broken up into small sectors, which are monitored by air traffic controllers. So this is literally where my flight uh, out of Greensboro this morning uh, was handled. This is uh, the part of the of Atlanta Center uh, that deals with departures out of Greensboro. With Center in charge of flights at cruise, let's turn our attention to TRACON, which handles approaches and departures, so... Let's check out the TRACON. TRACON stands for Terminal Radar Approach Control. There are TRACONs supporting air traffic at virtually every major airport in the country. Controllers at this particular TRACON are responsible for all traffic going into and out of Atlanta's International Airport, from the surface all the way up to 14,000 feet. They also handle all of the airports within about 40 miles of Atlanta. 
In essence, Tracon controllers are the first people pilots talk to once they're in the air and the last people they talk to before landing. The airspace around Atlanta is some of the busiest in the country, mostly because of the fact that Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport is the busiest. Here on this scope, you can see all of the arrivals into that airport during this non-peak hour. Next stop, North America's tallest air traffic control tower. But first, I think it makes sense to get an idea of what happens here at the tower. So we are basically, as you can see, we are basically cleared to land, cleared to take off. As the Tracon has the aircraft on their final approach, they'll reach a certain point and they switch them over to us and they'll contact what we call our local controllers who actually are the controllers for the runways and they'll clear the aircraft to land or when the ground controller, which is the controller when the aircraft come out of the ramps, they'll contact the ground control and they get, they get the aircraft sequenced for departures and hand them off to the local controller here, which we have a local controller for each runway. And, uh, and so that local controller will either clear the aircraft to land or clear, clear the aircraft to take off. As soon as that aircraft takes off and we, are, we can see that that aircraft is established on its course, we'll just say contact departure on a certain frequency and on, on their way they go. The scope of this airport can be overwhelming. So I thought I'd ask Kenny to give a bit more background about how it all works. We have five runways. Our basic configuration, we have two runways on the north side, three runways on the south side. And um, we typically land on the outboard runways and then on the inboard runways or your departure runways normally is, the reason for that is when you taxi out of the ramps and out of the, out of the gate, the closest you just go to the closest runway and then we can, um, we can get you to the end of the runway quicker that way. We are the, as you know, the busiest airport in the country uh, right now, uh, passenger wise and traffic count wise. Uh, last year we did drop to number two on the, uh, on the traffic count just by a little bit, but uh, so far this year we're still ahead, so maybe we'll retain that number one slot overall. Uh, we are gonna get close to probably 900,000 operations for the year this year. Uh, I think our busiest day was probably uh, 2010, I think it was 3,100 and something, but recently we're, we're still averaging or about 2,700 when our traffic is, is increasing month by month so far since March of last year. With that context, it was time for a long elevator ride up to the top. I was stoked about this. Again, a huge thanks to the FAA for this unprecedented access. The scope of responsibility and the importance of all the roles we're learning about is impossible to understate. Those are all the aircraft that are active in the system. We're currently looking at, uh, there's 8,170 in the system and we're looking at about 7,000 of them right now. So you have watched my videos. Yes, all the time. I'm always watching your videos. Thank you. Well, you're doing some other stuff too. Not always watching my videos, right? That, that is true. That is true. <laughs> you got another job. What's your job? I'm the air traffic controller here in the Atlanta Tower. Holy mackerel. And so you sent me a direct message on Instagram a while back yes. and invited me up here and you made it happen and that is so freaking cool. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, it's a great honor. I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a big fan of yours, so it's, it's great to have you up here. So you're up here, you're, you're controlling the, uh, you're coming from the tower, you're running these, the busiest airport in the world. What's your favorite part about your job? It's uh, different every day. Everything is different. There's nothing the same. There's, not, there's no paperwork really. It's just working planes and everything is different. There's nothing the same every day. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I fly through Atlanta all the time, so I'm sure you've helped me out a time or two. So thank you. You're welcome. You're I welcome. appreciate it. No Thanks problem. for what you're doing and, and keep going, man. No thank you. <laughs> Thanks. It was great chatting with Brian, and I'm so grateful for what he and his colleagues are doing. But it sure was hard to keep my eyes off the planes for this incredible vantage point. I'm not really sure how they do it. I hope you'll enjoy a bit of footage from up here for a moment or two.
what what should somebody do if they're interested in, in joining uh, joining air traffic control? Uh, there's different ways you can go about being an air traffic controller. We have a public hiring yeah. once a year, and there's actually, you can go to the military or a college program, which is called CTI program. So there's various ways of getting involved in air traffic. You can go to faa.gov slash jobs and look for jobs there. Um, we want to get as many people involved in this career field as possible. So, and I love it. I love doing it. So, you'll love it too. Well, Torrance, again, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys coming through. My goal with this video was to, to simplify it down to, <laughs> selfishly, my own level so I could understand it. But all this experience has made me do is, is want to return to dig in deeper. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, please leave me a comment below and let me know if you'd like to learn more about the air traffic control system here in the United States. I find it fascinating. I hope you do too. As always, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs, thumbs up. Double click the thumbs down button if you didn't like it. And between now and the next time, see you in the sky.